inside the circle. 195 pounds. Sean, we're moving our way up to the hog mollies, baby. Sean, Darby District. A little cold? Yes. I, I can feel it. We need to turn the heat back up. I think so. I think We've been here a little while. I think it shuts off at midnight. That's yes, I time. think that's what it is. We have Friday Night Fireworks, whiteboard predictions, inside the circle, 195 pounds. Sean! It's a great weight class. It's got a lot of big heavy hitters. matches your My face. face right now. Ah, let's go. Tell me about 195. If you watch the 106 pound whiteboard prediction, which I'm sure most of you did because you're junkies like we are, yep. we talk about how uh, some wrestlers in some weight classes uh, resemble others. And crazy enough, 30 years ago, 30 years ago. Day, 30, you day. know when the state tournament started 30 years ago? No, I don't. March 2nd. March 2nd? That's the state tournament. State, uh, that's yeah. the district tournament this yes, week. Yes, and this year, the yes. district tournament is going to crown its first state qualifier on March 2nd. Boom. So right 30 years March. to the day. And 30 years ago to the day, and why we mention this, 30 years ago to the day, ago. the state was in the midst of producing one of the greatest upper weight freshmen at the time the state has ever produced. And everyone is so excited to see it. He entered the district tournament with one loss. Hmm. Uh, losing to the uh, eventual Division One state champion, the late Kevin Randleman. But anyways, back then, teams didn't travel. They stayed within their areas. We just didn't travel like we did now. And right. everyone was just excited to see this freshman. Um, and the question in everyone's mind is, is this guy going to be a four-timer as a freshman in the upper weights? Mm. But if he's not a four-timer, he's at least going to be a three-timer. And crazy enough, he got beat in the district tournament. And then back then, we had follow your leader. And the guy who beat him ended up getting beat into the shock of everyone at the tournament and everyone in the state. We had to wait another year for him to be unveiled mm. for the rest of the state. Do you know who I'm thinking of or who I'm talking of? I have a great idea of who it is. Can I say it if I know? Yes. Luke Fickle. It Columbus St. Francis de Sales. It was Luke Fickle. And back <laughs> then, uh, freshmen competing at upper weights was unheard of. And the fact that this guy was beating almost everyone Boom. pretty handily was astonishing. And no one could believe it was happening. Everyone wanted to get a glimpse of this guy. And uh, for, you know, he just got beat. And he went on to win three state titles. Yes. And be considered one of the greatest upper weight wrestlers in the history of Ohio wrestling. <sighs> the reason why we mention that, obviously, is because the state is in the midst of producing a, another phenom freshman at the upper weights. And ironically, he is also from the Central District. Ironically. So is the state going to be able to see him? Or is he going to have the same fate as Luke Fickle did? Well, he certainly won't have follow your man. And we know have, that. And have to uh, wait another year for the state to see him. Uh, I bet we're about to find out when we go over 195. But with having said that, let's look at the participants at this year's 195 pound weight class. Let's! We have Nelson from Groveport, Madison, Handy from Tri Valley, Sherman from Westland, Garbark from Gahanna Lincoln, we have Cox from Olentangy Liberty, Wilson from New Albany, Huey from Hilliard Davidson, and Shoemate from Dublin Kaufman. At the top half, the bottom half, we have Pulliam from Dublin Scioto, Cooper from Hilliard Bradley, Lopez from Olentangy Orange, Painter from Marysville, Ursuline from Chillicothe, Harmon from Mount Vernon, Weaver from Hilliard Darby and McCloskey from Delaware Hayes. We brought our 16 and whittled them down to eight. Sean, let's talk quarterfinal winners. You know, one thing that's just struck me is I see we have another Wilson up here. We do. You know, once we got to like the 70s and 80s and up, it's yes. been a lot of Wilsons. They must be Earlier was Williams. Yeah, they must be a stout gene through the years of <laughs> so Wilsons here. But we'll start at the top here. I think this is a great field, to be honest with you. Yes. Not only do we have a couple big big names in here, but I think the top eight here can be mixed and match in any way that I'm really excited to see how this plays out. Okay. At the top, we have uh, two returning district placers in Nelson of uh, Groveport Madison against Sherman of Westland. And, uh, you know, Groveport Madison wrestles a little bit of out-of-the-way schedule. We talked about that a little bit mm -hmm. with Tri-Valley. And it's hard to judge the progress of these teams that we just don't visually get a scene. And it's, ha it's hard to find the results of them, too. But uh, Nelson's a pretty solid kid. Does a ton of wrestling in the summer. Been around the mat a long time. I mean, I've seen this guy wrestle in youth, and he was just crushing kids. So at this spot, I'm going to take Jake Nelson of Groveport to advance to the semis. Well, well, well. Nelson. 
Where do you want to go next? We're going to just keep going down the line here. Here we're we go. Shoemate of Dublin Kaufman wrestling Cox of Liberty. You know, Liberty, uh, Cox last year just kind of was coming to his own. Really wasn't putting a lot of time into wrestling. So a uh, football guy. And then this year he just absolutely exploded. It looked a lot more focused to me. Mm -hmm. Looked, you know, dialed in. He had a big win. Uh, over uh, returning district placer Sherman yeah. in the uh, semifinals of the Newark sectional. Really had some good wins. He got second, I believe, up at the Wadsworth tournament. That's always a solid tournament. Yes. Just a solid kid overall. But at this point, Shoemate, this guy's a b hair's on fire. He's actually killing everyone. He's uh, not even had a close match since the North Kent Hoover tournament. Got it, Shoemate. Dublin Kaufman. What about Pulliam Painter? Painter, we have a state placer against a district placer. Uh, Pulliam only has one loss, I believe, to date against who uh, said uh, another participant in this district, which we'll get at later. But I think Pulliam right now is a little bit ahead of Painter in the game. All right, we'll put Pulliam right here. Pulliam, Dublin, Scioto, and what about McCloskey Harmon down here? Yeah, McCloskey's Pretty. one of those guys we talked about in the sectional wrap-up and didn't have a lot of success early, but really dedicated himself to the sport and to getting yes. better. It really came out. I think this was a great draw for him. I think he'll uh, advance out here with relative ease. So we'll have McCloskey making it to the semis. McCloskey, Delaware Hayes. Boom! Sean, these are here. We're going to cross them over. Right there. All right, we got Harmon, Painter, Cox, and Sherman to go. Okay, so we're going to start at the top here. Hmm. We're going to go with Painter for the Monarchs. Got it. And the bottom, we're going to go with the rematch of the semifinals at Newark and stick with Cox. Got it. On Tangy Liberty. And they need opponents, so we get those from here. Let's talk. Go. Uh, we can start at the bottom here. McCloskey, I really got a chance to see him wrestle at the Riemann Invitation. He looked great to me. And then I seen him wrestle the following week at Liberty. And he seems like he seems uh, kind of hesitant in these big matches. Maybe he's a, mm. he just is afraid to pull the trigger. And I think in this situation, you have to go in extremely confident. We know how Dublin side of kids are coached. We know how they act in this. They're a very confident team. And I think Pulliam will have that edge on him. And we're going to go with Pulliam here. All righty, Pulliam. Dublin, Scioto. What about on top, coach? This, I think, is a more tricky match than mm. people think. I think on paper, people like Shoemate here, but Jay Nelson's a funky kid for an upper weight guy. Again, I remember watching this kid wrestle in his, uh, when he was a first grader. Gotcha. He's wrestling all these tournaments, and he's just a real funky, athletic big guy here. But, you know, Shoemate, this guy, he's really done a lot. He's beat a lot of ranked kids, a lot of returning state placers, a lot of returning state qualifiers, and so forth. Until he gets beat at Derby, he has to be considered one of the favorites, so we're going to go with Shoemate here, advancing out to the finals. Gotcha. Shoemate, Dublin, Kaufman. Nelson will drop over here. Nelson, Grove Boy, Madison, and McCloskey will come here. McCloskey, Delaware, Hayes. Sean, let's do this. Well, since we've been going top to bottom so far to this point, we might as well stick to the game. Okay. We're going to start at the top here again. Nelson's a really difficult guy to wrestle, but you know, I think Painter is just his time. He was close, okay. to knocking on the door last year, getting the uh, alternate spot. This year, they've really worked with me. He looks like he's filled out to be a uh, pretty solid 95 pounder. So they're going to go with Painter, punching his ticket, getting to the shot. Painter. And what about down here? And down here is the same situation. McCloskey and Cox actually wrestled at the dual meet between Liberty and Delaware maybe about a month ago. Okay. Both camps were very confident coming in the match. They thought that us uh, it set up well for them. You know, I thought McCloskey would have more, uh, you know, he ended up winning 5-4, but he just looked hesitant to me. In situations where I really thought he had scoring, he was just hesitant to pull the trigger. Hmm. I think more familiarity with uh, Cox is going to help him. I think the success he's going to have of getting to the semifinals, he's going to be more confident. The Raymond, Lambs, those guys know what they're doing up there. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to make the judgments they need. And I think McCloskey is going to come all the way from a, a freshman finding his way to the mat to a state qualifier. That is fantastic. We'll put Cox down here. Now that our 3, 5, and 1 are set, let's talk it. We're going to have Cox getting fifth. Cox, on Tangent Liberty. We will have Painter getting third. Painter, Marysville. And at the championship, yeah, at the beginning when we talked about this, we talked about Luke Fickle 30 years ago, and I think Seth Shoemate is following in those footsteps of uh, 
a phenom freshman in the upper weights that you really don't you really don't see. I mean, I think the greatest upper weight myself is Chris Phillips. What he did mm -hmm. at the Ironman his freshman year was absolutely amazing to me. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. But you know, uh, Seth Shoemate has really to this point taken the state by storm. When I go to Cleveland, when I go to Cincinnati, they all ask me, is What's this freshman thing? really the real deal? And I'm like, you know, he's pretty solid. You know, he's up around 198, 190. Five. They tell me he's got to cut weight now to get there, so mm. he's put time into his body to get to that weight. But there's nothing that replaces experience and sometimes the jitters. So um, yeah, I just think that's something overlooked. I believe freshmen now with the way we wrestle with the, the off-season stuff mm -hmm. has exploded. True. This guy probably has more matches than a typical freshman would have back in the 80s where you would enter the district tournament maybe 22 or 23 and 0. Yeah. So I think he has more of that going for him. I'm, I'm excited to see how he does at the state tournament. But this match, they did wrestle at the Riemann Invitational, and it was really uh, 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 centered around an eight-point move. And you're like, eight-point move? What's an eight-point move? The match started with the throw. Durant, you know, went hands to the face. He did it again. So you got the five plus the penalty plus the one plus the one. I mean, you know, you give up top level to anybody. Yeah. Anybody in the country, you give up eight points in the first 30 seconds. It's clearly going to change the outcome mm -hmm. of the match. I think this match is going to be a lot closer than the... Um, Riemann Invitational. Okay. Pulliam is coming in a little bit beat up, though, from uh, the Newark sectional. Mm -hmm. But um, until he gets beat, I'm going to stay on the Shoemate wagon, and we're going to have Seth Shoemate as your 195-pound champion. Seth Shoemate. Elvin Kaufman. So we got Seth Shoemate, champion. We got Pulliam, runner-up. Painter coming in third. We have McCloskey in fourth. Rounding out your state qualifiers. Cox is your alternate with Nelson as your district place winner. And now you are inside the circle.